Hi guys, Dr. Gretchen here, physical therapist and multiple sclerosis certified specialist. I have got my matcha here with me today, and I wanted to talk to you guys about neuroplasticity, but more specifically, who neuroplasticity will actually work for. I will give a brief overview as to what neuroplasticity is, but I do have another video all about it. I'll post it up here in case you wanna watch that. Today's video is going to focus on questions that those of you are asking me like, am I too old for neuroplasticity to happen for me? Or has my disease progressed too much? and therefore neuroplasticity won't happen for me. I get these questions all the time where you're hopeful that neuroplasticity will help, but at the same time you feel like it's not gonna work for me. So I'm going to answer those questions for you right now. Okay, so the first thing that we need to talk about before we get into those questions that I mentioned earlier is what is neuroplasticity? I love talking about this topic because neuroplasticity truly is the reason that someone with MS can get stronger, walk better, improve your balance. I know it often sounds too good to be true, but it is a proven thing that happens, even in people with multiple sclerosis. And when I'm giving keynote speeches, one thing I love doing is asking the audience to raise their hand if they have heard of neuroplasticity. And then I will ask them to keep your hand raised if you know it so well that you could explain it to someone else. And usually 90% of people's hands go down. And I think it's so important to understand what it is to a point where you could explain it to someone because that's how you know that you truly understand what it is. And in my opinion, if you don't truly understand it, you might not be as consistent with your exercises because you don't believe it. You don't understand how it can work for you. So. Again, I'll post a video up here if you want a full description on what neuroplasticity is. I'm gonna do the brief recap for you right now. Neuroplasticity is the ability of your brain to do two different things. First and foremost, it's the ability of your brain to strengthen neural pathways from your brain all the way down to every muscle in our body. Every muscle in our body has a connection from our brain through the spinal cord and to the muscle. So when you have MS, those muscles are weaker, not because the muscle isn't strong due to muscular reasons, it's due to the neural pathway being weaker. So the first way that neuroplasticity works is it strengthens those neural pathways. Let's say you go to lift your leg and it does lift, but it's heavy and it's hard to lift it up and maybe it doesn't lift as much as the other side lifts, that means that your neural pathways are there, they're just not strong enough to produce a full movement. So in that case, when you do your exercises, your brain is trying to strengthen those neural pathways. The second way that neuroplasticity can work is to find brand new neural pathways. So if you try to lift your leg up and it doesn't lift at all, or if you try to lift your ankle up and it doesn't lift at all, what that means is that your neural connections have been demyelinated or injured so much that that neural pathway is not going to work anymore. So your brain is able to find a new way to go from point A, meaning your brain, all the way down to point B, meaning your muscle. So it's important to know that each muscle group is independent. You might have some muscle groups where you just need to strengthen the neural pathway, and you might have other muscle groups where you need to actually find a brand new pathway. Neuroplasticity can take a really long time. It can take anywhere from a few months to a few years. It's different for everyone and it's different for each individual muscle group. The way that you get neuroplasticity to work is by doing the right exercises. So for example, if you have difficulty lifting your knee up, I call that movement marching, then you would want to practice marching with good form as many times as you can, even if it's really challenging for you, or even if there is no movement whatsoever. So practicing with good form as many times as you can. And one thing to keep in mind is 
rest breaks are okay and they are actually encouraged. When I'm giving guides to my clients of how many repetitions they should do or how many sets they should do, the number I often give is 30 good quality repetitions. But the way to actually get that to work for neuroplasticity is to take breaks. If you can do 10 good quality repetitions, then do 10 and then stop. But your second set, you might be a little bit more fatigued. So don't do 10 if a few of those are with bad quality. Stop at seven and then take a break. And then your third set might be four, then take a break. Then your fifth set might be two. Maybe your sixth set is also two. So take breaks as often as you need. The only way to get neuroplasticity to happen, whether that's strengthening pathways that already exist or finding new pathways. The only way to get those two things to happen is by repetition of good quality movement for the specific muscle group that you are trying to strengthen. So one of the questions that I frequently get about neuroplasticity is, will neuroplasticity happen for me? I'm 75 years old. Or, I have had MS for 40 years, will neuroplasticity still happen for me? So if you've had this question before, whether it's related to your age or the length of time that you have been diagnosed with multiple sclerosis, or, this is often different, the length of time that you've been having symptoms from MS, my answer is, it doesn't matter. Now. Yes, neuroplasticity can happen for anyone. Truly, it just requires consistency of good quality repetitions over time. And as I mentioned, for some people that might occur in a few months, for others it might occur after a few years. So it does require consistency. However, it does happen for everyone, but the older you get, the longer it takes. And that's true for any type of neuroplasticity. Neuroplasticity isn't actually just to help you strengthen your muscles. You can use neuroplasticity to learn a new language, to learn a new skill, to change your mindset, to break bad habits. And as you think about it in that way, it might make more sense. As we get older, it's harder to learn a new language or a new skill. It's the same with finding new neural pathways to strengthen muscle groups and to improve your balance and to improve your walking. So yes, it can happen. And just because you're 70 or 75 or 80, it doesn't mean that you shouldn't practice the exercises. You absolutely should. It's just likely going to take a little bit more consistency for you. Do not give up. One thing that motivates me is that you never know when the neural pathway is going to work. It might be one more repetition of you trying, or maybe it's in 15 tries from what you're about to do and you thought you were gonna give up. Don't give up, you never know when it's going to kick in. So that's the first question that I get frequently is, am I too old? Have I been diagnosed for too long for neuroplasticity to work for me? So my answer is no, neuroplasticity can work in anyone. It just might take a little bit longer. The second question that I get often, I probably get this question daily about neuroplasticity is, is it worth doing the exercises if I don't see my muscles moving? And this is really common in MS. What you might experience is one side, maybe it's your one ankle or one hip or knee, doesn't move at all, even though the other side does, or maybe it's both sides that aren't moving. So I have a two-part answer to this one. So the first part of the answer is to try to determine if there's any movement at all in that muscle, even if it's just twitching. I'm gonna put my T down to show you something. So for example, if I am going to bend my elbow, the muscle that needs to flex is my bicep muscle. So let's say that also pretend it's down here, you just can't see my arm. So I'm just gonna move it up here for you guys. So let's say, I'm trying to work on strengthening this movement so that I bend my elbow. So let's say I'm trying right now, I'm trying so hard, I'm saying, Dr. Gretchen, bend, 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 try to bend that elbow, bend that elbow, and nothing's happening. Either one of two things is occurring, and there's only one way you can tell what it is. I want you to take one or two or three fingers and place it on the muscle that's supposed to be flexing. So in this case, it's my bicep muscle. So put some fingers on there and then try again. Bend, 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 try to bend your elbow. And what you might feel 
under these fingers are muscles tightening, flexing, or twitching, trying to activate. And that is ideal because if you feel that, that means that your brain is firing enough to get the neural pathway down to your arm. It's just not strong enough of a neural pathway for it to produce a movement. So that is what you're looking for when you're placing one, two, or three fingers on the muscle. Try to do the movement, try to bend, 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 bend. Even if there's no actual movement, do you feel anything under your fingers? If so, amazing, then absolutely you need to keep trying that exercise over and over and over again because you do have a neural pathway that's working, we just need to strengthen it. And the brain is really cool. It knows when to strengthen versus when to find a new one completely. When to strengthen a neural pathway that exists versus finding a brand new neural pathway. I don't know how that works, but our brain does. Our brain knows how to do that. So the first thing is touching and feeling. Do you feel anything? And if the answer is yes, awesome. Keep going with the exercises. If the answer is no, this is definitely more discouraging. You might be trying to do the muscle action and you tell me, Dr. Gretchen, I feel nothing. There's nothing under my hands. First of all, Try touching in a different spot. I'm a physical therapist, so I know exactly where your muscles should be tightening, but you might not. So play around a little bit. Try to bend the elbow with your hands here. And if you didn't feel anything, maybe over here or here, higher up, lower down. So play around with it a little bit. And if you can't feel muscles firing anywhere, that's okay. But what that means is that your neural pathway is not strong enough to get all the way down to those muscles. So in that case, your brain absolutely is trying to find a new way to get that neural pathway connected to that muscle group. Regardless, in both of those situations, whether you feel the muscle tightening and flexing, even though there's no movement, or you feel no muscle activation and there's no movement, still do the exercises. The only way to strengthen your muscles, to improve your walking, your balance through neuroplasticity is repetition over and over and over again, even if you don't see movement. And one thing that I like to remind myself is that we have two options. When you have MS and you want to get stronger, option one is to do the exercises and do them consistently enough so that you hopefully will see results. Or option two, don't do the exercises. And with option one, you have the possibility of noticing those improvements, increased strength, balance, walking, independence, function. But with option number two over here of just not trying, you are 100% guaranteeing that you will not get stronger. So for me personally, I would like the possibility, even if we know that we don't know when it's going to happen. You know, it might take a year, two years, six months, three months. We don't know. There's no way to find out unless you try. So I like to remind myself that those are the two options when you have MS. Try the exercises consistently with good form, good quality, and you have the potential of getting stronger. Or don't try and you're guaranteeing that you won't get stronger. Everyone's a little bit different, but that's how I like to think about it. Lastly, the other question that I get frequently is, I have brain lesions, will neuroplasticity work for me? Or I have spinal lesions, will neuroplasticity work for me? This is a great question and I do wanna clarify this for you. So there is a ton of research stating that neuroplasticity does happen for people with MS who have brain lesions. So if you have brain lesions, you're good to go. There's lots of research suggesting that you absolutely should be doing these exercises and that neuroplasticity absolutely can work for you. Now, spinal lesions are a little different. If you have spinal lesions, there's much less research in this area. And I have asked as many MS neurologists that I know what their thoughts are on neuroplasticity for spinal lesions. And the general consensus is that we don't know if neuroplasticity works for those with spinal lesions or not. And so in that case, there's no negative side effects to acting like it will help. 
So again, going back to those two different options of exercising with that possibility of improving or not exercising and guaranteeing that you won't improve. When it comes to spinal lesions, those are still your same two options. There's less research, so we don't know. But imagine in five years from now, there might be research, convincing research, stating that if you have spinal lesions, neuroplasticity actually does work for you. How bummed are you going to be if you spent five years not exercising because you thought it didn't work, because research said that we didn't really know what was going on there? So, of course, I'm a little biased because I'm a physical therapist, but regardless of if you have brain lesions or spinal lesions, or if you are over 65 years old or younger than 20, or how long you've been diagnosed with MS, everyone, everyone should be exercising consistently and with good quality being the main focus. Now, depending on where you're at with your MS journey, you might be thinking, I can't exercise, I'm, it fatigues me too much, or I don't even know what exercises to do, or it's my knee, not my elbow. <laughs> Remember that the elbow is just a guide for today because you can't see my legs right now, but everything that we talked about, even though I demonstrated with my elbow, occurs for the hips, the core, the knee, the ankles. If you do feel a little lost, if you feel like, okay, you've convinced me, I'm excited to exercise, but I have no idea what exercises to do, and you want some guidance from me so you know what to do to improve your walking, your independence, strength, balance, core, all that good stuff, then check out the comments below. I'm going to put a few links for you there. One of the links will be information on my online MS wellness program, The Missing Link. This has tons of my favorite MS-specific neuroplasticity-based exercises for those with MS to help improve your mobility, independence and function. And I will just say most people who participate in The Missing Link tell me daily how they feel more empowered and confident and free from the strength that they are gaining and the knowledge that they are gaining. So I will put that link in the comments below for you to check out along with a few other things. I have a free five-day MS strength challenge that might be helpful for you. Also a total core program. And if you have any other questions about neuroplasticity and MS, please drop them in the comments. I would love to answer them for you. These are questions I get super often. Am I too old for neuroplasticity to work for me? Have I been diagnosed too long? And I have brain or spinal lesions, so what does that mean for me? So I hope you're feeling a little bit more clear. Again, check the comments for any links for MS-specific exercises. And if you have any questions, drop them below. Thanks for tuning in.